Hello, and welcome to another Digital Differential Equations lecture video for Salt Lake Community College. In this video, I would like to finish going through Chapter 5.3 and look at the last example that I have of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In our guided lecture notes, this will be page 29. Here we're given a linear transformation T mapping R3 onto R3 defined by this matrix of transformation. Now notice that with our larger matrix of transformation, our techniques are going to have to change slightly when looking for our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. However, our underlying approach is still the same. Let's start by looking for our eigenvalues. find our eigenvalues, we'll still look at the determinant of a minus lambda i. And recall your determinant must equal zero. When looking at the determinant of a minus lambda i, remember a minus lambda i always subtracts lambda off of the main diagonal only. So this will look like two minus lambda. 1, negative 2, and leave some space so this doesn't get crowded. 1, 0 minus lambda, just negative lambda, 0, 0, 1, and negative lambda. And we need this determinant to equal 0. And because we have a 3 by 3 matrix, we can't use the shortcut for finding the determinant like we did for 2 by 2 matrices. So here I'm going to choose to use the expansion by cofactor technique. Remember, it does not matter which row or column you expand on. I'm just choosing the first row because it's on top. And remember with this expansion by cofactor technique, you have to remember your signs. Remember that your first cofactor will be positive, negative, and then positive again. Remember when you're using the cofactor expansion technique, the first cofactor 2 minus lambda is positive. And then we multiply that by a smaller 2 by 2 matrix created when you cancel that first column. So it'll be the 2 by 2 created by the entries negative lambda, 0, 1, and negative lambda. Then it'll be minus, so the first cofactor was positive, the second cofactor will be negative. So it'll be negative 1 times the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix created when you cancel that middle column which will have entries 1, 0, 0, negative lambda, plus the cofactor of negative 2 times the 2 by 2 determinant created when you cancel that third column, which will have entries 1, negative lambda, 0, and 1. Now for these smaller 2 by 2 terminants, we can use the shortcut method that we have where you look at the product of your main diagonal minus your off diagonal. So I think this will be 2 minus lambda times negative lambda times negative lambda is lambda squared minus 0 minus 1 times negative lambda minus 2 times this would be 1 times 1 is 1 minus 0 and we call this all has to equal 0 I'm going to go ahead and simplify this express or this equation now maybe by distributing the lambda squared to either both of these terms, simplifying each of these other terms. So I think this will be 
negative lambda squared or negative lambda cubed minus 2 lambda squared plus lambda minus 2 equals 0. Notice I've written these in a descending order. Now, recall from college algebra that sometimes these cubic polynomials can be very hard to factor. However, sometimes they can be easy if you can see a common factor or a way to make the first two terms and the second two terms equal. So here, what I'm accompli way to accomplish is I'm going to factor out um, a negative lambda squared out of the first two terms. And if you factor a negative lambda squared out of the first two terms, I think you get a lambda minus 2. which match the second two terms. And since lambda minus 2 is a common factor in the first term and the second term, we'll factor out the lambda minus 2. And write this as lambda minus 2 times negative lambda squared plus 1. Recall you need to have that 1 there because if you were to multiply this back out you'd have lambda minus 2 times negative lambda squared which will give you your first term and then lambda minus 2 times 1 will give you the second term. And to make this a little easier I'm going to rewrite the second term by changing the order. This isn't really required, but it helps me see the factoring easier. So I'm going to write this as lambda minus 2 times 1 minus lambda squared. And now that I can see the second factor is really a difference of squares. So lambda minus 2 times 1 minus lambda times 1 plus lambda equals 0. This gives us three factors and three distinct eigenvalues. Lambda 1 is equal to 2, lambda 2 is equal to 1, and lambda 3 is equal to negative 1. These are the three eigenvalues associated with this linear transformation. Okay, now let's go and look for our eigenvectors. And recall when we're looking for our eigenvectors, we're looking for solutions to the equation a minus lambda i times some non-trivial vector x equals the zero vector. For our first eigenvalue, lambda 1 is equal to 2, then the matrix A minus lambda i, which remember always subtracts lambda off of the main diagonal only, will give us the matrix. So grab your original matrix. And we'll subtract our eigenvalue off of the main diagonal. I think this gives us the matrix 0, 1, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 2, times some vector x with components x, y, z equals the 0 vector. And we're looking for a non-trivial vector x to this equation. Notice though that this is a matrix equation of the form a 
AX equals zero. So we're looking for the homogeneous solutions of this matrix equation. And if we recall our methods from chapter three, one way to do this is to write your augmented matrix. And what I'm expecting when we look at this augmented matrix, we'll be able to put it in RREF form, we should be able to confirm that there should be free variables and infinite solutions to this. It's because, the, remember, the matrix A must be singular, so there's no inverse. A inverse is not going to exist. And that also means that we have to see free variables. So let's grab our calculators and let's enter in our calculator and look for the RREF of this of an augmented matrix. Grab my calculator. And let's clear this out. And let's go enter our augmented matrix first. Remember our augmented matrix. Um, hit the second matrix key. Let's edit a matrix. And we need to enter, when we make an augmented matrix, it's going to have three rows and four columns. It'll have entries 0, 1, negative 2, and 0. The second row, 1, negative 2, 0, and 0. The third row, 0, 1, negative 2, and 0. I want to make sure I entered my matrix incorrectly, so I'm going to go back to my home screen and I'm going to grab matrix A just to visually look at it. Notice this should be the augmented matrix from AX equals zero. And now let's ask the calculator to put this in RREF form. So hit second matrix, we'll arrow over to math. Remember, RREF is at the bottom of this list. So I like hitting the up arrow to get to option B. And we'll do the RREF of matrix A. And so the matrix we get back be 1, 0, negative 4. Remember, I like putting the dotted line to separate the right-hand side. And as we were expecting, we should have expected to have two pivots, so maybe the x and y are your pivot variables, and one free variable, your z variable, and that gives us our infinite numbers of solutions. Of course, we just need to find one of these infinite solutions, one of these eigenvectors. So recall our technique for finding our solutions now would be to rewrite our matrix as a system of equations. This would be x minus 4z is 0, y minus 2z is 0, and z is your free variable, which we're going to introduce a different letter like t to represent that. Now we solve for our pivot variables in terms of our free variables. So I'm going to write x is equal to 4t 
when you move this to the right hand side and replace z with t. y is equal to 2t, z is equal to t. And to get one of our eigenvectors, let's let t equal 1. Don't let t equal 0 because that will give us our trivial solution. We want a non-trivial solution. So if t is equal to 1, we get one of our infinite solutions, one of our infinite eigenvectors. We get the eigenvector 4, 2, 1. However, if we let t be a different value, we would have got a different eigenvector, but it would have been a parallel vector to this one. This is our first eigenvector. Okay, let's go look for our second eigenvector. We'll look for the eigenvector associated with lambda equals 1. Now remember, you must be subtracting 1 off of your main diagonal. So look back to your original matrix here. And let's subtract 1 off that main diagonal. Now when you subtract 1 off that main diagonal, I think we get back the matrix 1, 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1 times the vector x, y, z equals the 0 vector. Again, notice that we're writing a matrix equation here. A matrix equation in the form ax equals 0. And this matrix A, we should acknowledge, we're expecting that A is singular. We're expecting there to be infinite solutions, infinite eigenvectors that solve this equation, instant non-trivial ones. But to get there, I'm going to write the RREF of this matrix equation. Or the RREF of the augmented matrix. I'm going to grab my calculator first and let's enter the augmented matrix. So let's go back into your matrix key and let's edit matrix A. It's still going to be a 3 by 4, but now the entries will be 1, 1, negative 2, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and then 0, 1, negative 1, and 0 again. And just to make sure I entered this right, I'm going to go back to my home screen and I'm going to grab the matrix A. Just make sure it's the right augmented matrix. And once I know it looks right, I'm going to row reduce this matrix. So this is the RREF of our augmented matrix. It looks like 1, 0, negative 1. Again, I like separating the right-hand side with a dotted line. 
zero one negative one zero 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 and as we were expecting again this matrix is singular since this left hand side did not end up being I we only have two pivots and one free variable that gives us our infinite numbers of solutions and again let's rewrite this back as a system of equations this will be x minus z equals 0 y minus z equals 0 and z is a free variable which will represent with t Remember, you solve for your pivots in terms of your free, which means you put that z on the other side and replace it with t. So x is equal to t, y is equal to t. And z is equal to t. But if t is equal to 1, then we get our eigenvector 1, 1, 1. Remember, though, if you pick a different value of t, you'll get back a different eigenvector, but it will be parallel to this one. Okay, that's our second eigenpair. We have one more to do. We need to go find the eigenvalue associated, sorry, the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue negative 1. Maybe you'd like to pause the video and find this one on your own. In which case, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, let's see if we agree on our last eigenvector. For the eigenvalue negative 1, remember we have to subtract this off the main diagonal. But when you're subtracting a negative eigenvalue, you end up adding it. Which gives us 3, 1, negative 2. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, time sum vector is the 0 vector. And note again that this gives us the matrix equation. Ax equals 0. And we want to find the solutions to this matrix equation. And we'll find that again by looking at the RREF. Of the augmented matrix. So let's again grab your calculator. Let's enter our augmented matrix. And I want to make sure I got this correct, so I'm going to go back our home screen and just make sure I entered the augmented matrix correctly. And now I'll look at the RREF of this matrix. And we get back 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and again a row of zeros at the bottom. And we were expecting this because we knew this matrix A had to be singular, which means we knew we weren't going to have a full set of pivot variables. So again, we have X and Y are our pivots. Z is our free variable.
So let's write this back as a system of equations. x minus z is 0, y plus z is 0, and z is our free variable, which I'll represent with a letter t. And if we solve for our pivots, we'll have x is equal to positive t, y is equal to negative t, z is equal to t. Remember, every choice of t gives us a different solution to this original homogeneous equation. And that represents the infinite numbers of eigenvectors. But we just need one of our eigenvectors. If we let t equal 1, then we get the vector 1, negative 1, 1. And that is the third eigenvector associated with our third eigenvalue. Okay, I hope this is helpful, and I think I've given you all the examples you need for your homework. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me, and I'll see you in our virtual class session. But this is should be everything you need for your homework. I'll see you in our next video.